What are you wearing? Oh, you mean uh, Spider-Man, Iron Man, Thor, and Hulk? Yeah, I know who they are. What? Why are you wearing a Marvel shirt? Because we're talking about Captain Marvel. We're not talking about Marvel's Captain Marvel. We're not talking about Carol Danvers. We're not? No, we're talking about DC's Captain Marvel. Oh, you mean Shazam? Wow, the wizard gave you powers to change t-shirts? Yeah, I mean, all the cool powers were taken, so I had to settle for that. Well, let's get started. With Shazam. Hi, I'm Chris Pierdomenico. And I'm Dave Pierdomenico. And we are here again with the Philly Film Brothers podcast back after a hiatus. Um, today we are going to talk about the DC Extended Universe... Shazam! Can you let me finish? DC Extended Universe film... Shazam! And it's just fun to say that word, you know? It's it fun. is. It's, it's funny. When I, I saw it, I knew very, very little about the comics. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not a huge comic reader. I do like comic book movies, but that they were kind of my introduction to the, the folklore. And, you know, when I heard the, the DC was releasing Shazam, I just kept thinking of uh, that uh, Sha- Shaquille O'Neal movie from the 90s. That's Kazam. Kazam. Uh, and then apparently, wasn't Shazam the movie that Sinbad was supposedly in? That's right. For for many years, a lot of people mistakenly believed that right. there was, in fact, a 90s movie where Sinbad played a genie, and it was called Shazam. Right. And it's one of those cases of what's called the Mandela effect, where a lot of people have, like, this false memory that they swear they remember, but they're they're wrong. Like, it never yeah. existed, and... It's some weird psychological thing as to why their collective memory is wrong. Right, right. But now there is a Shazam. There is a Shazam. And yeah. they actually did do the Sinbad movie, too, as a, a April Fool's show. I like, saw it. Was like, it was like on YouTube or something. Yeah. This one was better. Right off the bat, definitely the most entertaining of all the DC Extended Universe movies. Of, of all of them. So this is number seven, right? I think number seven? I think so. Um, and, yeah, I have not, I, admittedly, I've not seen a majority of the DC Extended Universe movies. I've just, I've had been very, very busy. Um. I'm very disappointed in you. Well, you yeah, know, I, they let me down a little bit, and I, you know. Okay, I get that the Batman v Superman did. Uh, and, did, you, not, did you even see, uh, Aquaman? I didn't see Aquaman. I hear it's good. I just, I, It's underwater Star Wars. Sure. It's awesome. Um, what I will say is that with Shazam, I and I heard I heard Aquaman was good, but with Shazam, it was just a lot a lot of fun. I don't remember having I've had that much fun at a superhero movie in a long time. Like I would say, like actual fun. I, maybe the last time was um, Thor Ragnarok. I think was was probably that much fun. In a weird way, it almost feels so. Which he's also he's also in very briefly. But go on. Yes, he is. So you you look at something like. Suicide Squad. Right. Where, you know, they went back and they did reshoots and they had a music video company do a re-edit of the whole movie to make it, like, fun and in-your-face with classic rock because they were trying desperately to make it fun and cool like Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. Shazam felt like it was that fun, lighthearted, hilarious DC movie, but it never felt like it was, oh, it's trying to be like this Marvel movie. It was just... It was that way on its own. Yeah. Um, I What I really liked about it, and it's funny because I knew nothing about Shazam as a character. Neither did I. Uh, starting out. And when I after I saw the movie, I went back and I looked I looked, looked into him. And the movie, for the most part, is pretty true to the comic. Um, as far as... Uh, like a Shaz- kid becoming a superhero. Kid becomes a superhero by saying the word. Uh, he has siblings in the, in the comics. Uh, so like Mary is is Mary Marvel in the comics. Uh, his uh, the the younger brother, uh, tell me his name. It is escaping me. What's the name? It's not Billy. Billy was the was Billy Shazam. Batson is Shazam. What is his name? Freddie. Thank Freddie. You. Yes. Freddie. Um, in the comics, he also has he has a crutch, and all the siblings are represented. And so it's 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 called the Marvel family in in the comics. They of course, and it's very famously, 
um, they uh, had to give up the name to Marvel, and so they just became known as the Shazam family. Um, and then Which, in the, the DC did it first. They did, but you know, I think it's hard to argue with Marvel since that's that's their name. Yeah, um, that might have been some trolling back I in think the sixties. <laughs> I guess so. Um, and I believe in the later, in the more recent Shazam comics, they were a foster family. Mm-hmm. Like originally, they were actually. I think Mary Marvel was the twin sister mm-hmm. of Billy Baxton, and then they made it. And I think what really makes this movie work is that it's a movie that's very, very clearly set in the real world. It is. It it has, it has that gritty heart to it. The fact that it's set in Philly. Yeah, I love that, and I was disappointed. Most of it was was filmed in um, Vancouver, I believe. But it's set in. It's Philly. set in Philly. First superhero movie set in Philly, unless you count Unbreakable. Oh uh, yeah, well, and Glass. <laughs> and Glass, but no, it was just it was cool to see that. You know, in, in in my review of it, I you know I I mentioned that so much of the DC universe is you have, you know, Aquaman, the rightful heir to the throne of Atlantis. You have Wonder Woman, a you know, a, a demigod who's a daughter of Zeus. Mm-hmm. You know, you you have uh, Bruce Wayne, billionaire, mm-hmm. Billy Batson, and 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 his alter ego Shazam. It it, it feels like. He is the superhero of the people. Yeah. You know, coming from a foster family, coming from, you know, he, he's not rich, he's not famous, he, he's not of nobility or royal blood. He's just a kid. Mm-hmm. And he's, in a lot of ways, he's like DC Spider-Man. Kind of, in yeah. In that he, it's very much grounded in the real world. Um, and I think also what really makes this work is if, if you take out all of the superhero elements, um, it really works as a drama. As, it does. As, like, a, I, as a teen drama. In, in addition to, you know, it, it's hilarious. It, it's lots of fun, but it has a lot of heart. It has a lot of heart. About him finding who his family is, you know, about him, you know trying to find his mom that was heartbreaking it was and it's it really it sends such a a positive message about families and different kinds of families and foster families they're a very diverse group and and, um really kind of reminded me of how i felt like at the end of guardians of the galaxy 2 except not with aliens or or in distant worlds but it's just some kid in in a in a foster family in Philly, like you, yeah. you could believe they're real people, and then adding that superhero element into it just makes it so much more interesting. Where you have, you know, what would happen if you introduced this supernatural element into uh, already really great characters that we want to root for? Um, and it, it kind of it approaches it like people like I, okay, I know Superman and Batman exist in this world, mm-hmm. but it it treats it as people that haven't really encountered any of this magic before. Because well, it's Philly. Uh, it's Philly, right? Yeah, it's not not much. Which it's funny because I guess Philly exists in the same land as Gotham and Metropolis, and Metropolis yeah, and Atlantis, <laughs> and Atlantis, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Um, no, it's just, I I think that because of those cities, they get all the attention. Philly's forgotten. Yeah, that's well, why that, they needed that kinda, Shazam. That kind of why why it works. It, it drew me in almost immediately because it almost starts like a horror film. So when I when I saw um. When I saw 1970, whatever it was, mm-hmm. um, I, I kind of immediately knew that I'm like, oh, this is the villain. This is his This backstory. has to be the villain's backstory because I knew it was it took place in modern house. I, but that's just me. I think anyone, you know. I thought that. What um, a messed up family he came from. Which, you know what I discovered? So his father yeah. was one of the semi-bad guys in Batman and Robin. Really? Dr. Jason LaRue. I think, was it LaRue? The guy he, who created, he uh, created Poison, po- Ivy. Poison Ivy. No, he created Bane. And, he and created then Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy, yeah. Uh, which I didn't even recognize him, but that's, oh my God. that was him. So he's got he was in another DC movie years are you, ago. Are you telling me that Batman and Robin is part of the DCEU? <laughs> no, a different character. And that years after being that ridiculous as George Clooney, that's why Batfleck is so moody? Because he lived yes, through that's the that's exactly what card. happened. That's exactly what happened. Okay. Yeah. I buy it. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, it starts out like... It, it, it does start out like a horror movie. And that was that was of interest to you. You know, when he's transported to meet the wizard, it is like out of a horror movie. Like the, the Seven Deadly Sins, mm-hmm. you know, the, 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 the statues, that place is creepy as hell. 
Yeah. And I, I think it's interesting that sort of like the most lighthearted, fun movie of the DCEU was brought to us by director David F. Sandberg, who's known for horror. He directed mm. Lights Out and Annabelle Creation. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Which marks the second time in a row that DC has found success by getting a horror director. Like with James, James Wan doing Aquaman. Yeah. There's something to that. Something to that, yeah. Oh, they're just good filmmakers, it looks like. You know, on paper, it sounds ridiculous. Oh, it, it sounds... does. Like a 14-year-old boy gets superpowers. He, he gets transported on the subway. He goes to a cave with a wizard who gives him powers. And, and yes, they Shazam. Shazam. Like, it sounds ridiculous. And the movie knows it. And it runs with it. It runs with it. It owns it. I mean, almost very... You know, I mentioned it's similar to Spider-Man. I think it's probably more similar to Ant-Man in in terms of tone, where it's kind of a ridiculous concept. But But they they, they own it and and they make it work. They embrace it they make it work. And, and, you know, as as, as soon as he gets those powers... He does everything a fourteen-year-old boy would do. That's yeah. When getting everything. superpowers, everything. And I, I lost it. I love the convenience store scene. And I love everything about it because it's, it just, it is what a kid would do. You know? Um, and I think that's just what made it just so enjoyable. Is that I, you know, they, they call this genre, um, wish fulfillment. So it's kind of, you know, similar to, to Tom Hanks and Big, which they make allusions to as well there were you can definitely tell big was was an inspiration yeah and it not and it didn't feel like it was like hopping it like it just felt like it was inspired by Mm -hmm. and they they gave a little there was a nod to it was a nod to it um as there was to rocky right because you can't do right movie in philly without but it it wasn't over the top and um i mean the seven deadly sins there they're a cool concept but me being the horror fan i kind of wish we kind of delved a bit more into them i feel like there's like a really disturbing backstory to them that i wanted to see no i see i think we got just as enough of them as we needed and maybe um, that's me i love horror and, movies you know the villain wasn't that interesting like i, I like he he was a little interesting like you could tell at least his reasoning for doing what he was doing even if you disagreed with it um he was more interesting than uh Enchantress from Suicide Squad. Oh, of course. Of or course. Lex Luthor from Batman v I mean, Superman. he was kind of like a Lex Luthor in, or some, Doomsday. in some way. Or Doomsday. He, he yeah. is what Lex Luthor should have been. Uh, yeah, Batman no, absolutely. Superman. Absolutely. Um, you know, and I, you know, when he's at, when he's at their foster house and he's threatening the kids, like, you really feel that. Like, you really feel for them because suddenly you have this, you know, this, this drama about these kids, um kind of being faced oh my gosh like they, they could actually die from this i remember and, thinking in, in a weird way the stakes feel higher there than they do with zod and superman throwing each they other really, in disguise they really did yeah that's because it felt real that's a really good point i i really felt for those kids i wanted them to be okay you know, it felt like you you felt like these kids have been through so much you see them get bullied at school you yeah. know they've struggled to find a sense of family and they're all that billy has now and then when uh, I love, I mean, it's and it's I don't know if our theater cheered or not, but when when Billy goes into the the cave dimension to face off with the bad guy, I love when the kids just show up and they shoot like a a Nerf gun at him, yeah. and someone throws like the batarang at him. Uh, he Freddy, had a mid condition batarang, right? It, it was a real batarang um, bought from eBay, and that was just something. so cool. And I, it could have been really cheesy having them all turn into superheroes at the end, but it felt it felt like it was earned. It worked. Um, because you really liked all those characters, and it just, I think it solidified that sort of, that undertone of, like, family can do anything. And, and really, this is everything that DC should have been doing from the beginning, making entertaining movies yeah. with heart and compelling, interesting yeah. characters that they just, I, I think their problem early on was, you know, they knew, oh, Batman and Superman, they're so popular, we don't have to do the work with them. Yeah, that's exactly. They're just what it well was. known. We don't have to put in the legwork, but for Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and now Shazam, they had to, and it's the reason why those three movies are the best. <laughs> Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and Shazam. I mean, they they don't have many other iterations, and maybe that's part of and, it too. And I think that's part of it. And if if you look at how DC uh, Marvel has handled it over the years, you know their most popular characters have been ones that really weren't that well known like until you know, they did the until movies. they did the movies and so i just think like shazam i think when you have someone like batman and superman you have 
<clears throat> you have a it's almost impossible to please everybody because, because there's such an existing mythos even, there's, yeah. at, as much as people love and praise the dark knight trilogy there are some fans who say oh well there's no michael keaton i would love to see now a crossover with shazam aquaman and wonder woman that would be great. I know. They, I'd love to see the three of them. They, and up. they tease that at the end. I heard that um, uh, Henry Cavill was going to be in it, like it's a cameo. But he like, couldn't for scheduling reasons. Scheduling reasons. But I, I don't know if they're just going to trash that. But they, I, I love that it. It makes fun of itself. It makes fun of the it DC does. universe where he, <laughs> when he throws Batman at him, he's like, I, "Batman, get him!" Right. And then when when you're seeing the final fight and you're seeing. Um, there's like a kid watching from like an apartment and he's fighting Batman and Superman together and then he drops them and is just watching To look it. at Shazam. Right. That was the DC universe saying, you know what? Forget that. Yeah. That was the past. We're bearing it. This is what we're going with now. Yeah. Because even, I know you haven't seen Aquaman, but what James Wan did with Aquaman by turning him from a punchline mm -hmm. into one of the coolest superhero movies in recent times mm -hmm. and now what they've done with Shazam, a character... Who was virtually unknown? Yeah. Who, whose only real claim to fame was having the same name as Captain Marvel. Right. You know they they've really come into their own, and you know I I feel like just in time for DC to say they're not really doing the shared universe anymore. Well, now's the time I'm excited for it. Yeah, I don't know what they're gonna do with Batman. I think they're gonna probably see how this uh, uh, Joaquin Phoenix Joker, Joker works out. Does. I don't know if that's connected. That that there's a lot of implications with that one, which um I I mean I, I don't want to get into too much, but if you've never seen have you seen The King of Comedy? No. Uh with Robert De Niro in the eighties. Um but it, it it has there's Robert De Niro's in it mm -hmm. and there's a shot of him that is very, very much an homage to the King of Comedy. And you can tell that they're gonna use some elements from okay. that. But it's essentially the plot of that movie it, it, it's this obsessive comedian that dreams of being Johnny Carson. Oh. That's, and you can tell they're going to do something and like I that. And I love, you know, Joaquin Phoenix, after that year, he wanted to be a rapper, and then it turned out to be that <laughs> documentary. He's definitely proven yeah. he can be creepy enough yeah. to be the Joker. But I'm okay with them doing movies like that, but I, I don't want them to abandon their universe. For me, the ideal setup would be, DC still has their extended universe, but they're still free to every now and then. Well, here's a movie that's not set in that. And, I, and I it's think, its own. And thing. I have to laugh because you like universes now. When I when I was doing independent film, when I was planning my own universe, you're like, oh, that's stupid. No one does that. That's I, that's because you were desperately trying to be like Kevin Smith. It was more your motivations he, that annoyed and me. He started it. I mean, he did. Okay, he didn't. The comic the started, comic started it. it. But he was the one that really brought it back. I mean, I guess I guess you could say Universal started it like a hundred years ago with the their monsters. But but Kevin Smith was the one that did it in the modern age. He did, and and now you're like, yeah, Universal. But at the time, you're like, oh, that's that was stupid, you know. And I would say the same thing if I felt like DC was trying desperately to be like Kevin Smith. They were just trying to desperately be like Marvel. Right. But now I feel like they finally saying, figured it out. I'm just saying there there is an art to it and it, it is it, it works for a reason. And you weren't doing that art right, is what I'm saying. Well that's that's everybody's a critic, right? <laughs> Especially this guy. Um That's what you, you have me do for the site. <laughs> yeah, I I think with this movie, uh it's just funny. Like it's just really legitimately funny. That's why I say without it it's not I don't think it's the best movie in the D C universe. From sort of like a cinematic film standpoint, See, I, I think now, now but I, it's the funniest. It's the most entertaining. I haven't seen a couple of them, but I, I would say the ones I've seen it is because I think overall, if you take all those elements, there wasn't a moment of this when I was bored. Um, I was very engrossed in the whole thing, um, and I think I would easily say that it is one of my favorite superhero movies. You know, maybe not the it, it's my up favorite there. one, but I. I would say out of like a top five, I would say it would probably be up there. I'm torn between this and uh, and Aquaman. Yeah, I loved Aquaman. Well, they're getting their act together, and they are, uh, and it's good to see. And you know, hey, they, well, they they beat they beat Marvel to having a, a female superhero yes, being the, did. the protagonist, the headliner uh, with Wonder Woman. That was great too. I know I mentioned it reminded me of Spider-Man and Ant-Man a little bit, but I, I think maybe more so it reminded me of Deadpool, like almost like a PG Deadpool. Because it's like he's trolling his own franchise. Well, he's trolling the franchise. He's trolling the genre. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just funny because we're all in on the joke. And I, I just thought 
the, the I thought one of the funniest bits is when they're having the face off in the sky and they're flying and the villain is revealing his plan. He's like, he's what? Like, I can't, what? I can't, I can't, we're like a hundred feet apart. Right. I can't hear you. Right. Cause in those movies, like they're, they have conversations, they have like conversations <laughs> that, and they can hear each other perfectly. And I just thought that was great. That, that was, was hilarious. That was so, it's so simple, but it was so clever. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would easily say that was the most fun I've had at the movies in a long time. Um, that's a very bold statement. It is. Uh, a long time could be, Yeah, I mean, I guess... You, you also said it was the most fun superhero movie in a long time, and the last one was Thor Ragnarok. It's like a year and a half ago. It's the most fun <laughs> I've had at the theaters probably since Thor Ragnarok, because that was fun, too. Now, I loved Infinity War, don't get me wrong. But it's not... Infinity War was really intense. It's really intense, and it's it's a great movie, and I enjoyed that on a different level. But if we're talking about, like... You know, I think there's a difference between appreciating great art and just appreciating, like, fun art. Mm-hmm. And I think for me that this was like fun. This was just very it was, enjoyable. It was. Yeah, yeah. So that's all I have on Shazam. I'm sure. I'm sure they'll do a sequel. I hope they do. And in a weird way, I don't know how this would work. Yeah. I hope they do a crossover with Teen Titans Go to the Movies, <laughs> which kind of did the same thing mm-hmm. last year, where it trolled its own. It's not part of the DC Extended Universe. Yeah. <clears throat> but it poked fun at it. Right. Yeah. I'm... It was it was the sense of humor that DC needed. Like, there's a scene where Batman and Superman are fighting, and they have that scene like, oh, what's your mother's name? Martha. And they're friends. And he goes, wait a minute. What's your father's name? <laughs> Jonathan. Thomas. And they resume fighting. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I got to see that, too. It's great. Um, so if you haven't already, see Shazam. It's great. It's a lot it of fun. It is awesome. And, and, and hopefully, if you do, the wizard will give you a cooler power than just changing your t-shirt. Hopefully. Thanks for joining us on the Philly Film Brothers podcast. Uh, we'll we'll see be you back again for... Uh, Endgame. We're in the Endgame now. Do you like my Benedict Cumberbatch doing an American accent? No. Thanks for watching.